Hi, I'm Max Greenfield, and I'll be reading a very special book today. It's actually my son's favorite book. Uh, it's by William Kotzwinkle and Glenn Murray, and it is called Walter the Farting Dog. It's illustrated by Aubrey Coleman. Walter the Farting Dog. Betty and Billy brought Walter home from the dog pound. Nobody wanted him, said Billy, but we love him, said Betty. Well, he smells awful, said their mother. I think you'd better give him a bath. Mother walked into the bathroom and said, he still smells awful. And that's when they got their first clue, the telltale bubbles in the water. He's probably just a little nervous, said Mother, hopefully. His stomach must be upset, but Walter's stomach was not upset. Walter's stomach was fine. He felt perfectly normal. He just farted a lot. He did it when he bathed. He did it when he played with Betty and Billy. He did it when he walked around the house. He did it in the dining room. He did it in the kitchen. He even did it in his sleep. That dog farts morning, noon, and night, said Father. He can't help it, Daddy, said Betty and Billy. They didn't mind Walter's farts. So what if he farts, Billy said to Betty when they were alone in the room with Walter. Betty agreed. Walter agreed, too. He sat there, looking innocently around, farting. Take him to the vet, said father. Farting, said the vet, or rectal flatulence, as we say in the medical profession, and he prescribed a change in diet. They gave Walter every kind of dog food. He farted. They tried him on cat food. They gave him hot dogs, hamburgers, and lettuce and tomato sandwiches. They gave him fried chicken. They gave him rabbit food. They made him a vegetarian. No matter what that dog eats, he turns it into farts, roared their father. Walter got the blame for everyone else's farts, too. You know, if Uncle Irv let one slip, he just went and stood by Walter, and then all he had to say was, Walter, and everyone would look like poor Walter. He has to go back to the pound, said Father. No, Daddy, please, begged Betty and Billy. Don't send Walter away. He goes tomorrow, said Father. They pleaded. Walter farted. It was all over. That night, Betty and Billy cried in their beds, and Walter looked at them unhappily. Oh, Walter, said Betty, you've got to stop farting because Father is going to send you back to the pound tomorrow, said Billy. Walter knew just how serious the situation was. He'd never see Betty and Billy again. He resolved to hold in his farts forever. And when Betty and Billy fell asleep, he walked down to the kitchen to see if there was anything around to eat. He managed to open the cupboard door with his nose and found the 25 pound bag of low fart dog biscuits that the vet had prescribed for him, which had made him fart more. And even though he knew they made him far more, he just couldn't resist. He ate the entire bag. Very tasty, Walter said to himself. And then he went to lay down on the sofa. And a gigantic gas bubble began to build up inside of him. Oh boy, this is going to be trouble, he said to himself nervously. He was afraid of what might happen if he let it go. He thought maybe the house would explode. So he kept it in. It wasn't easy. In fact, it was torture, but he had resolved never to fart again. His future depended on it. And as he lay there, with his tail wrapped tightly between his legs, he heard a noise at the window. He watched it slowly open. A pair of burglars came through. They dropped silently into the kitchen. Watch out for the dog, one of them said. He won't bite, said the other. He's just a wimp. Walter may have bitten them, except he was so filled with gas that he couldn't move. They tied a rag around his snout so he couldn't bark. Okay, whispered the first burglar, let's clear this place out. And they took everything they could get their hands on. Walter wanted to stop them, but he was having an unbearable gas pain. He rolled on his back and waved his paws in the air. He gnashed his teeth. Ugh, 
We have got to get it all, said the second burglar. Let's get out of here. That's when Walter let it fly. It was the worst part of his life. It made a tremendous noise and shot him across the room. A hideous cloud filled the air. The burglars clutched their throats, unable to breathe. And with tears in their eyes, they raced for the window. They tried to grab their bag with all their valuables in it, but their arms were too weak. Let's just get out of here, they said. They jumped out the window and they ran up the block, choking and gasping for air, still blinded by Walter's attack. They stepped into the headlights and above, of an approaching police car. Hold it right there, said the policeman. And when father and mother came down in the morning, they found the open window. And they saw the bag with their valuables in it. And Walter was sitting beside it. He still had the rag tied around his snout. You could say, well, he looked a little heroic. He saved the silverware, cried mother. He saved the VCR, cried father. Good dog, Walter. You are our dog. Even if you do, fart all the time. And so the family learned to live with Walter, the hero dog. And that is the end of our tale.